Hey everybody, Sam here with another In Defense of Bad Movies mini-sode. <sighs> I'm a little down right now. Unfortunately, as we were recording this, the Dodgers have just lost the World Series, but I am nothing if not a professional, and I will try to have energy for this podcast. What we do on this podcast is we take a movie that is generally regarded as bad, and at least one of our panelists defend it as a good movie. The next movie we're going to discuss is Where the Wild Things Are. This is a little bit of a, a cheat one that we have to do in that it's actually critically fairly well regarded, but it is uh, not liked by viewers. So it is a bit of a split, which is something that we like to explore every once in a while. So do check that out. You can get it for a reasonable price on iTunes or Amazon. And uh, so that'll be pretty soon. Uh, Actually, very soon, because I am recording this mini-sode after we've already recorded the episode. So I will hopefully get them out in pretty quick succession. Until then, though, as we often do in our mini-sodes, we do themes like old times with our hosts, Sam and Lauren. Take it away, Sam and Lauren. <sighs> hey, Sam. Sam here. Um, I'm afraid I'm a little bit down right now. The Dodgers just lost the World Series. And it's making me kind of depressed, but I'm a professional, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it together and try to be upbeat for this podcast. <laughs> and of course, I'm I'm joined by Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Sam. How are you tonight? All right, I won't talk about that the whole time. Oh, I thought I'm... you were gonna try to even it out. Like on average, that was be... sort of the goal. Okay. Um, I am appreciative of your plight, but I'm doing just fine. Lucky you. What are you, an Astro fan or a Giants fan even? Um, this is like a sports game. Yeah. This is this is foot game. Which... <laughs> no. It's baseball. Oh. And then there's no crying in it, apparently. Since you this don't is a cry movie. And you just punch stuff. I have not actually. <laughs> um, since this is a movie podcast. Well, right now it's a TV show podcast, but since <laughs> it's a it's TV show podcast inside of a movie podcast, I have to go by the there's no crying in baseball rule, <laughs> which is, I think, a movie crying, rule, sir. not a baseball rule, because there's lots of crying in baseball. You get hit in the balls by a fastball. Yeah. yeah. You're going to cry. There are Dodger fans crying tonight. Yeah, that too. There, yeah. Plus and, is. I mean, a lot of them are children, but I guarantee you there's adults who are <laughs> crying too. I feel bad for you guys, obviously, that your enjoyment of life is so tied up in how... <laughs> A sports team does. I I'm feel not. Bad for this you. is part of no, why I'm not usually a sports fan. And <laughs> uh, I used to be a sports fan back in the day, and uh, the Dodgers were my baseball team. And even though I don't really follow sports, I still they are my team. They are my my baseball team. So when they do well, I root for them, and when they do poorly, I, uh, in a case where and actually. Actually, it's when they do poorly, it's no big deal. It's when they do very, very well to the point that they get to the World Series in Game 7, and then they don't win it. That's when it becomes heartbreaking. <laughs> anyway, this is not... Houston hasn't been through enough. You don't feel like they deserve this. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. What state is Houston in? Texas. Fuck them. <laughs> um... When they say don't mess with Texas, it's really good advice. And by mess with, I mean have anything to do with... <laughs> Just don't mess with taxes. Just don't do it. We Fuck have em. nothing but the utmost sympathy for people who were affected by the hurricane. And of course. And we wish nothing but the best for you By all. the way, uh, we've got a dog making squeaking noises. By the way, Lauren, do you know how many Dodgers were from Puerto Rico? How many? I have no, no idea. But possibly some. How many Astros were from Puerto Rico? That's that's, uh, that's a moot point. <laughs> it's cow's opinion. That's a moot point. <laughs> anyway, let's anyway. talk about television let's celebrate this day with just the most feminine of shows even though i argue it should be universal <laughs> but what i've decided i'd like to do is you've cleverly talked me into doing another super series <laughs> on crazy ex-girlfriend do people watch that show is it considered an entertaining, I hope they do. successful television show? It is a critically respected show, and I hope that it is financially viable, that they will keep doing it, for I love it so much. <laughs> I'm glad you love it. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I've watched I, at least one episode, maybe two, and it was entertaining. I, I wouldn't mind watching more, because I do. It is I think not fully musical, but it is... Right. And there's... God, you're a loud dog. Just Studio when, dog. Why do we have a studio dog? Yeah. 
This is the podcast. Pet. Oh, it's because he's cute. That's he is cool. very cute. Uh, unfortunately, Bobby's not here to lick his face, <laughs> which is adorable. Bobby's always licking the dog's face. It's so gross. Um, Bobby is not here for the dog to lick Bobby's face. Oh. I must be more careful with my pronouns. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I think you should watch Crazy Ex-Girlfriend because it's a fantastically, as I said, feminine show. It's wonderfully from a contemporary woman's point of view. But it's so funny and brilliant that anyone with taste would enjoy it. Okay. And it's, as you said, it is musical. The premise of the show being that whether diegetic or not, these characters interpret their life through musical numbers. And they'll often break out at different points, you know, in musical fashion to comment or enhance whatever they're discussing at that moment. And I love and, musicals. Exactly. So. And they're good. Like, the majority of the songs are quite good. It's not just... You know, throw away silliness. I'll put it on my list. But you know what, Lauren? Mm-hmm. There's too many shows. Too many shows. So. But this show is excellent. <laughs> it started in 2015. They are short seasons. So that's always, that always they're, helps. They're you know, respectively short. We're not talking like a British season. No. But they're, you know, not your 22. If you can cap out at 13. On. If your network show, which it is, if you cap <laughs> out at 13 a season, that is doable. So should I tell you about the show? Please. It was created by Rachel Bloom and Aline Brosh McKenna. And Rachel Bloom is, she had a fantastic beginning of career making YouTube videos. She worked around as writers in Hollywood. She worked on Robot Chicken for a while and like other projects. If you check out her um, F Me Ray Bradbury video that she produced when she was younger, it's delightful. And she, you know, always kind of with this bent towards songs, but in very mature and twisted ways <laughs> and she's so funny and is the star of the show and just told breakout it began in october of 2015 they shopped it at first to showtime who then passed and happily the cw picked it up the weird cw that every show for showtime because they would have been they would have allowed more potty language and it was gonna be a half hour length before Interesting. and i mean that's even more shocking the cw yeah. not only picked up the show but Made it even better by extending it to the hour long. <laughs> Every ten years, CW does something that I care about and oh. love very much. It's what a have you week- cared about in the past. <laughs> Gilmore Girls, Gilmore Girls. Only. Yes, okay. it's a really and Buffy before that. Yeah. It's a very weird business model they have going oh. on. But well, I'll take it. I don't know if you're their target demographic. I like the idea <sighs> though crappy. that like that like oh we've had hundreds of shows and Lauren's hit upon three. We've got to. <laughs> Got to do better, guys. <laughs> well, stop effing up all the stuff you do. Stop making don't. everything a locker room show. Yeah, don't make a show about Mary Queen of Scots, but make it some BS teeny angsty show. I hear good things about Riverdale. Yeah, people really like that Riverdale. <laughs> I'm also older. Mm. Like the soap operas where I can watch 20 somethings playing high schoolers, <laughs> I, the patience has waned. But Crazy Ex Girlfriend is right in my demographic, which might be part of why I love it so much, because it's a 30-something woman who, well, will do the theme song and explains it all, as brilliant theme songs should. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. But essentially a woman who is not in a healthy mental state. I will say that right <laughs> now. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, Our listeners have first? already heard the theme song. Thanks to a uh, suggestion by one of our listeners, we will now be playing the theme song first. <gasps> And then we will have the episode, and then we will sing the theme this song. This would have been important to know. I'm sorry. Okay. Should I back up what I'm um, saying? If you want. I, ha- I mean, I haven't done the editing yet. I can drop it in right now. No, don't do that. That's silly. I was working hard at a New York job, making go, but it made me blue. One day I was crying a lot, and so I decided to move to West Covina, California. Brand new pals and new career. It happens to be where Josh lives, but that's not why I'm here. She's the crazy ex-girlfriend. What? No, I'm not. She's the crazy ex-girlfriend. That's a sexist term. She's the crazy ex-girlfriend. Can you guys stop singing for just a second? She's so broken inside. The situation's a lot more nuanced than that. C-R-A-Z-Y. Okay, we get it. Crazy ex-girlfriend. Too late. I've already done it. Now <laughs> you've either way. By now you've heard the podcast, All right. and you've heard the premise of the show. And going in part and parcel with the brilliance of the show, so you've just heard a very concise, perfect, complete distillation of the premise of the show, and also capturing the emotional reality, the questioning of you know Rebecca's sanity and craziness, and you know what does it mean to call a woman crazy in this day and age, and is that really appropriate? And it's it's. So much more than just a love story. It's really 
just an exploration of contemporary adulthood and it's brilliant and that's a brilliant thing about it that each season as the story develops each season gives you a new theme tune that's commenting on where we are then so over the next several months we'll go ahead and do season two and three cross our fingers for more by the time we get to it but right now we're starting with classic simple season one okay so usually we discuss who wrote and performed yes. the song. Yes, yes we do. Uh, unfortunately, we have a little bit of a dearth of information. We research the exhaustively. main page of Wikipedia exhaustively. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if it's not within the first page or so, I mean, we you, give up. But you, still, it's usually, like... Usually there's that column on the right that says who performs We it shouldn't have to look further than that. Exactly. Uh, it does tell us who performs it, which you can tell by looking. Actually, well, there's plus the background people, but whatever. Right. Uh, so Rachel Bloom performs it. Yeah, she does. She, I'm sure she's got to be part of the writing team. Of course, I do. But so. we don't know necessarily that she writes it this just this by herself. No, and probably does not. It would be unfair. I'm sure to give her all the yeah. credit, as there are surely lots of people involved. Probably the show's creator, uh, composers, Adam Schlesinger might be involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frank Campy or Tom Pulse are other names listed below his. Yeah. Jerome um, Curtinbach, pilot only. Oh, but this hey, didn't premiere until the second episode. So. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Curtinbach. Yeah. You don't get credit Sorry, for Mr. it. Curtinbach. It's curtains for you, Curtinbach. <laughs> See what she did there. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, not a lot. <laughs> Not a lot, unfortunately, else to say about uh, who wrote it. But what say I bet we? That Rachel Bloom was all over it. Probably. Let's say we watch a little bit of it, shall okay. we? Okay. So it's a combination of live action animation, like Roger Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah, we have a live Rachel in a very bright, pretty animated background, and dreaming of oh, dreamy animated Josh. And then our supporting characters, we've got anime versions, um, and describing who they are. New bestie, new boss, new neighbor, new buddy. All singing about how she crazy. The sun. Looking down Sun with some fancy sunglasses on. (laughs) Animation was done by Stupid Buddy Studios, which was founded by Seth Green. So to link up there with the robot chickenness. I'm obsessed with her. She's so great. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, sorry. She's got yeah. them heavy boobs. She's got some heavy boobs. Heavy I feel, boobs. What's I feel we would, about in the show? <laughs> I feel we would remiss. Uh, I mean, I guess we have pointed out. But but I almost feel like we, we're talking about the theme song. We almost should talk about more about the music. In, but that's too much. We can't play all the songs. And I wish and that we sing could. Along. If only we could, Sam. That would be if glorious. Only. If you would let me do a solo performance of all the songs from the show. But... We are strictly a theme song podcast. When we get into analyzing musical content of musical based shows, we will do my crazy, my crazy we will do Crazy Ex Girlfriend. <laughs> we will do Cop Rock. We will do that episode of Buffy. Of course we will. <laughs> but in the meantime, I highly encourage people to go check this show out. Okay. It's fantastic. It's ostensibly you know, a romance that is really undermined by the fact that romance does not have all the answers and you need to be healthy with yourself before well, you can a, be happy with other people. That is a nice idea. It's a very mature um, show. The, the lesson the show is trying very hard to teach our main character, Rebecca. Now, Lauren. Yes, dear. Would you like to sing? <laughs> yeah. The I'm scared because you want me to do... The main part all by yeah, myself. Yeah, you're going to get this. You're going to get, yeah. The main part's all you. And I'm nowhere near as good. <laughs> and I will do the backgrounds. Okay. Oh, before we actually do sing the song, Lauren, you just came up with some inf- interesting information. What do you like to share? Well, interesting is certainly questionable. <laughs> no, I was just pulling up But at a... least it's it's answering the question we posed earlier. I'm just pulling up a lyrics page that confirmed the song was written by Adam Schlesinger and Rachel Bloom. All right, cool. If we can trust this page. I don't think I can trust anything on the internet anymore. But that's all we have to go on. Well, Lauren. That's all we have to go on. We're on the internet now. Shit. So, no, that's a good thing. Do we get so, money from Russia? What? How does this work? Yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. Uh, we will be uh, vote Trump uh, retroactively in 2016. Uh, uh, no, but we're on the internet. So that, uh, guess what? If we get the facts wrong, hey, we're on the internet. Suck it. I want to be just like Rachel Bloom. Are you ready? Okay, okay, okay. You have to see the visual. She's so animated and lovely, though. 
No, everything else is animated. She is live action. Oh my gosh, you're, you're right. so confused. I am really confused. Okay, you ready? I was working hard in a New York job making dough, but it made me blue. One day I was crying a lot, and so I decided to move to West Covina, California. Fair new pals and new careers. It happens to be where Josh lives, but that's not why I'm here. She's the crazy ex-girlfriend. What? No, I'm not. She's the crazy ex-girlfriend. That's a sexist term. She's the crazy ex-girlfriend. Can you guys stop singing for just a second? She's so broken inside. The situation's actually more nuanced than that. C-R-A-Z-Y. Okay, we get it. Crazy ex-girlfriend. Thanks, guys. I'm still blue, but that made me feel a little better. You guys did a great job. Remember to join us in a few days, maybe later today. I'm not sure when I'll get this posted as Bobby defends where the wild things are. Thanks for listening, everyone. And go Dodgers 2018. That's the spirit. Jim,